Hello and welcome. And in these sets of slides, what we're going to be looking at is we're going to be looking at structure of poetry. And we're going to basically break down how a poem is laid out. And we're going to go through, in this set at least, lines and stanzas and what they actually mean and what sorts of things you should be looking for in the structure of a poem. So let's just start with the basics here, which is what do we mean by lines and stanzas? Well, essentially lines are the same as sentences. So, or sentence clauses, should I say, parts of a sentence. And stanzas are like paragraphs. So let me just look, take you through the example here on my right. And I'll go through basically how a, a poem is laid out as opposed to maybe another piece of normal prose text or something else that you'd be normally used to reading if you don't do a lot of poetry at school. Most of you will have done poetry before though and would know a bit about this, but maybe not so much the formal way to analyze this sort of structure, in which case this is what we'll go through here. So when you have a look at this thing to my right here, what you see is you've got three sentences. However, they're spread across seven lines. Now, what they basically mean is that each line there is a separate, what we call a clause. Now, a clause is just a part of a sentence. Some of these clauses normally wouldn't stand alone, but because it is a poem, it can stand alone because it, it's basically designed to be read along as you go through it. So they're usually spread by um, commas and other forms of punctuation, which means that basically as you go through and read it, it will just flow from one line to the next. Now the other thing, which is quite unique about a poem as well, is that yes, each of these here is basically a sentence. So the red, the yellow, and the green are all different sentences. All right, and when you also look at the the phrases and the, and the clauses which make up each line, you've got something which you can talk about independently from the rest of the sentence even. So if you're looking at, for instance, uh, the second um, sentence there, where you've got three different lines, you can talk about each line separately. Or you can just talk about them all together, lines three to five. And both of them are perfectly usable as this form of analysis. So it's something that you can break down a little bit more. Like you're looking at a song, you can basically do it by each each line of the verse or, or the chorus or whatever you choose to do. All right, now a line is basically uh, between each stanza. So um, when you start a new stanza, when you start a new, basically a new paragraph, you leave a line in between. So essentially you'll have six lines together, then a break, then another six lines for your next stanza, or however the poet has structured it. These aren't necessarily a formal arrangement for how you would structure a poem, it's just basically the way that a poet or a writer of poetry would just structure that particular poem, and it's usually just done for meaning or effect or flow or anything else like that. Okay, so when you have a look at this, what you're seeing is basically a um, a way of writing which is essentially like you would look at in a song but just not set to music. All right, so why is this basically, why is this different from prose? Okay, so poetry is more lyrical. So as I was mentioning before, like you would connect it to a song, songs have lyrics and basically, yes, the whole idea of a lyric is it's something that uh, is a word that you can set to a sort of a beat or a rhythm or something along those lines. Now, prose doesn't necessarily um, have to be rhythmical. It can be at times, and that's often what you would call something along the lines of poetic prose or something like that. Um, but in terms of writing just normal poetry in general, they are, poems are written in such a way which each line is basically a part of the beat, and as you read it through, it should, particularly good poems, will sound like there's a bit of a beat behind them or you can imagine it in your head as you're reading them. Um, they often use feelings and descriptions. So as opposed to a prose piece of text, which will basically, like a novel, which will set out the story and give you a big background to everything, a poem is basically, it's a very quick um, snapshot of a particular idea or a mood or an image. So anything that you would look at in a poem is going to be quite often done without a lot of context around it. And what I mean by that is basically when you're reading a poem and you're going, okay, what, what is happening in this story? 
you won't get a lot of background as you would in a novel where they will tell you about the characters and where they come from and they'll flash back to their house when they're younger and all those sorts of things. A poem will do it in a much simpler way. And so often the language you will get is a lot more descriptive and a lot more um, vague and abstract, which basically means that they're not really providing definite details as much as they're providing uh, long-winded details, which you can then apply a whole heap of ideas to. So really you're getting the same effect as telling a, a whole big long story, but you're doing it in a much, much shorter space. All right, and lines and standards are usually organized uh, in such a way that parts of the story are connected to each other. So if you're reading a poem, each bit basically matches and, and goes together. So like when you've got a paragraph in a story and each um, section of the story is divided by either a paragraph or a, or a new heading or a new section, a new chapter. In a poem, they're basically separated by these stanzas. So usually they'll follow some sort of a pattern. They'll go into a, uh, a six-line stanza or a four-line stanza or however many. It may not even necessarily be as formal as that. And what they will do is they'll basically uh, write in such a way that it flows it together and it basically it follows this big cohesive structure. And that's what you'd be looking at when you're looking at the difference between particularly poetry and a, a prose piece of text. Okay, now stanzas are also structured to, according to the way its lines are written. So what I mean by that is that each line will have a particular rhythm. And it might be that it just has a rhyme, it might be a, a particular pattern, it might be all of those things. And the stanzas are set up to match basically um, th this sort of flow. Usually they come in an even number of, of lines, and that's usually because of things called couplets, which we'll go through maybe a bit later, is basically they are two lines which go together. All right, now when you're having a look at these two lines each, then basically um, if you go obviously by twos, then you would have an even number of lines. And that's really how a lot of poems are written, is they're written in groups of two lines, which are then grouped in the stanzas, which are then grouped into a whole long poem. So having a look at that, you can see a little bit about how it's organized, which we'll go for a bit later as well. All right, and usually this sort of rhyming pattern or this way of being written is essentially a large part of how um, a poem is set up and a poem is written. And particularly different authors or different poets uh, will write their poem in, in very different ways and often will write in a very consistent sort of fashion. So either if they're writing a particular t type of poem or if they are just simply, their form of expression is that they will write in a certain style, use rhyme, not use rhyme, whatever it may be. So you have to have a very close look at it and just carefully analyze what sorts of things are, are put into the structure. Um, and to very simply, as I said before, count the lines that are there because that will give you a good way of actually describing it. You don't really need to use technical terms for it as such. Yes, you can use four line stanzas and call them um, things like sonnets and the rest. But in terms of most poems, they don't necessarily follow as a trick style. And usually poets are rebels, they're rule breakers. They don't really follow a particular style anyway. Um, so if you can find some patterns, whether it be a rhyming pattern, whether it be a, a bit of repetition, whether it be uh, a, a sort of a line that is um, not necessarily used over and over again, but lines that alternate a little bit, then you will start to see a pattern emerge, and that's what you, one of the things you can discuss. You don't necessarily need to have a technical term. Obviously, if you can find a technical term for it, then it's really advisable. The problem with that is that poetry has a lot of technical terms. Okay, so there are many technical terms that poets use when they are writing their poetry. And no, they're not acrostic or spiral. So they're not the ones you did in primary school. The ones you'll often do in high school, and obviously as you go through your, your senior years, you, you start doing harder ones. All right, they are ones which are more basically, well, they're not necessarily adult poetry, but they're poetry which are aimed at more mature audience and basically a deal with more mature and more abstract themes. So because of that, there are a number of different technical terms which are applied to such poems, and particularly those who study them will use a lot of technical terms to discuss them. However, there are literally dozens of them. 
and that's literally dozens for each kind of poem that there are there are out there so really you can use technical terms and it is a good idea to find some to use but obviously to list every single one of them would take forever to do and would probably confuse you a little bit so what might be a bit easier to do is when you start set studying a set of poems in school the best thing to do or for whatever course it is you're studying that particular poem for have a look at some study guides for it have a look at some uh, particularly poetry appreciation sites on the internet and they will give you a list of technical terms which you can then use now you don't necessarily use technical terms as a basis of your discussion however it will help when you're referring to things or when it asks for specific techniques because of the fact that many don't actually follow any particular structure at all it is sometimes kind of hard and a lot of techniques actually tend to blur together so for instance uh, if you're studying a particular kind of poetry it could fall into a number of different categories it could be a narrative um, slash satirical slash um, any other kind of poem there are literally dozens of categories and a lot of them overlap into other things so to use technical terms is one thing but you basically have to think very very carefully and yes it is important to do some research you like that's the same as it is for everything so basically when you go for a poem when you have a look at it for the first time obviously you'll read them through and if you don't understand them obviously you'll be looking at something like study guides anyway and when you start looking through those study guides one of the things that you'll find is you'll find a whole heap of of language techniques which go along with that particular poem obviously when you when you go for each one there will be a, a some sort of list of things that are in it ideas themes you can interpret the themes and ideas in your own way and then use those techniques which are in it to support your argument and that's basically all you really need to do so maybe find a couple of little terms things which stand out as being uh, meaningful and also help you to discuss the poem in a more meaningful way if you just refer to line five as being um, powerful language okay you need to define what that powerful language is and how it does that and if you can't just use a simple term like sensory language or something along those lines then it might be an idea to see if you can find something along lines of a particular language technique for that poem which you can then elaborate and add some extra discussion for now let's have a look at lines because again this is where a lot of students get a bit confused about how to describe a, a poem because as i said before poems aren't well they are written in sentences but they are mainly written in lines and each line is mainly what you'd be looking at you can look at the sentence as a whole but you would refer to it as the numbers of the lines so for instance you will go lines for three to five which will be that one sentence all right it doesn't follow the same structure punctuation or form either so as i said the sentences cut themselves off halfway through and that's fine because that's what a poem does it cuts off sentences in order for it to sound more like a, a song or a speech something that you would read aloud to someone and in, indeed a lot of poetry is really good when it can be read aloud so they don't follow the same sort of structure and punctuation so you don't need to worry about that too much especially when you're writing it and they'll have these particular lines which are called enjambments now what they are is essentially the lines which will start or sentences which will start on one line and finish on another like that example there or the train was moving steady as the rain thunder and lightning so in this case we've got one sentence which is spread over three lines and they are done purely for the effect of rhythm so if i was to read it properly the train was moving steady as the rain thunder and lightning all right those words the way that they're grouped and the way the syllables are grouped help to create a bit of a rhythm so it starts to it starts to build and a lot of really good poetry will create a sort of rhythm as it goes through so use the use of those lines and the use of that technique really allows a poem to um, to move forward to have a sort of a rhythmic quality and it enhances the overall effect and meaning of it so how do I talk about line structure that's probably the question you're asking the most well you're looking at how the poem is basically put together now unlike maybe a piece of prose text which was going to be a lot longer and the way that it is articulated is usually in a fairly set style poetry can often vary a little bit and even in the subtle ways that poetry um, varies 
you can have a lot that you can talk about. So you need to have a look at the format, like you would look at visual language. So the four line stanza, the six line stanzas is basically something that you can just see straight off without having to really read it. And when you make those groupings, when you find those patterns in its structure, you immediately have something you can talk about and sort of think about the reasons why it's set up in a six line stanza, as opposed to maybe a, a three line stanza or something like that. What groupings are there? Why, why are they grouped in that particular way? It may not have no stanzas at all even, in which case you've got to look through and just follow the whole way, thing, whole way through from start to finish. And when you do that, again, you will have your own sort of ideas about why it was structured that particular way and what effect that structure has. So really you're connecting basically text and meaning. So what effect, what sort of idea is generated by the way that your, your poem, or the, sorry, the poem you're reading is structured? Because when you're writing poems, you want to perhaps think about those sorts of arrangements as well. So lines and stanzas, even though they are a relatively small part of particularly writing when you're normally doing it, in poems they are things which do stand out quite a lot and you can have a lot of depth just purely talking about the way that a poem is structured and set up and put together. Now, it's basically, it, it, it's, it's the way that the poem has a bit of style. But it's also essentially about how the poet and how the author of a poem chooses to communicate with it, with his or her audience. And so when you have a look at those stanzas, you're essentially um, discussing how the, how the poet has chosen to communicate their ideas, to communicate their form of expression. And after all, that's what poetry is. It's a form of unique expression, which is unique to that particular poet. Then you've got an idea that you can actually start talking about and then you can incorporate other ideas such as language techniques and different ideas into it later on. So that's pretty much it for lines and stanzas. If you do need to um, look over it again, feel free to watch the video again. Otherwise, uh, ask a teacher if you are stuck, but otherwise I will see you later.